In this analysis video, we're going to take a look at the swing of Hideki Matsuyama. Now Hideki is consistently a top ball striker, and like many who can really go low, he shines with the iron shots, uh, specifically between 125 and 200 yards. In this video, we're going to discuss two of his keys on how he's able to hit such exceptional approach shots. Hideki is consistently in the top 10 in strokes gained uh, approach to the green. Um, he's his proximity to the hole is great. Um, he's a really solid iron player. Uh, he's a good driver of the golf ball, but he's an exceptional iron player. Um, he can struggle at times with the putting, but when he gets that rolling, he can go really low. Now, what's nice uh, for this analysis video is we're going to take a look at what he does during the release. Because right now, some of the hot concepts are to teach a lot of arm shallowing and early flexing of the lead wrist. And we'll see that Hideki doesn't really do either of those. You can see that early in his transition, he gets the uh, shaft in a more uh, vertical or steep position compared to his upper body, and he doesn't really flex that lead wrist. So how is it that he's able to do these things that typical amateurs struggle with, yet he is able to uh, consistently be a great iron player or just a great ball striker? Well, there's two keys that he's able to uh, demonstrate in his swing. Uh, one, dealing with his arms and the way he releases the club, and two, dealing with his upper body and how stable he's able to keep his sternum. Now, your arms actually connect to the sternum, so the sternum is the chest bone, is a great um, kind of reference for how your upper body is going to influence low point. So what many amateurs would do is from this a little bit steep position like so, they would shallow out the um, swing path by having the sternum go backwards away from the golf ball and having the sternum go up and probably having the sternum go a little bit forward. Now, what we'll see is through the release, he does a great job of keeping the sternum about the same distance away from the golf ball. That helps him provide a really consistent reference point for his arm extension. From the down the line, you'll see that even though he does a tremendous job of pushing with the legs and using the legs vertically as well as rotationally, you'll see that he doesn't let that cause his upper body or his sternum to move off of the golf ball. So he stays a pretty consistent distance from his golf ball, and then what he does with his arms allows him to make very solid, repeatable turf contact. What he does differently with his arms, which is kind of that second key, is he really releases the whole arm and not just the hands. What many people do um, from that steep position is they would release the club outside in and they would rehinge their wrists and bend those arms to help square the face. Hideki rotates the club, he just does it later than what most tour pros do um, currently. So he's able to rotate the club through this zone here, which allows him to get some shaft lean but still have the club face pointing at the target. If you struggle with getting shaft lean, then know that in order to have any amount of shaft lean and have the club pointing at the target, you're going to have to have some face rotation. Now, on the way through, what he does in order to produce more of a wide, um, consistent bottom to his swing is he straightens his arms and he extends, or he ulnar deviates, he unhinges his wrist, which helps keep the club uh, wider longer. It helps keep the club moving on a more shallow path for a longer period of time. And he does it so long and so late that you'll see that by the hands are almost um, belly button height, the club is still below them. He, he's one of the best at this, along with a uh, Jordan Spieth, and it's no coincidence that the two of them are some of the top iron players in the game. What many amateurs do is they would not really fully release their arms and shoulders, but instead flip the trail wrist and extend the lead wrist and have the club head pass very quickly. So they would have the club working its way towards that position compared to the hand height where Hideki keeps 
with the unhinging, keeps his hands above the club head for a long period of time into the follow through. That helps him obtain this really classic looking, what I call follow through position, where the arms are fully extended, the club is pointed just slightly right of his target line or pretty close to it, um, and the club is slightly below the hands. His sternum has maintained about the same distance it was from the golf ball, from where it was at impact through to that the end of that follow through position. So you got your two keys for iron play, but I wanna leave you with a, a tempo thought to work with as well. Um, one of the things that Hideki demonstrates that I've seen in my experience is that golfers who have more of a vertical or steep arm movement tend to do better with a quieter upper body. So you'll see that uh, Hideki has his famous kind of pause at the top where he collects himself and what gives him the look of more of that slow tempo uh, during transition is the fact that his upper body doesn't spin out very much. If you're going to have more uh, vertical arm movement, then keeping your chest closed or keeping your upper body quiet tends to really help balance that out and coordinate it. So you'll see, even though he goes pretty hard with his lower body, his upper body is not one of his major power sources. That combination of going harder with his uh, lower body, harder with his arms, but being quiet with his upper body, not spinning out, um, not creating a lot of aggression from his upper body, helps him control his path, his low point, and his face to be one of the more consistent iron players. So if you want to learn more about how your swing works, head over to golfsmartacademy.com, sign up for a free membership, and you can check out videos related to transition, the release, or general concepts like slicing and hooking. If you're not quite ready to sign up for a free membership, then please like or subscribe to our video here. That way you'll be the first to know about it when we come up with new content and release it here on YouTube.